Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday, October the 7th, 2021 session in our series on mobility. Asia moves forward in the fourth industrial revolution. I'm Richard Asher. I direct the U.S. Asia Technology Management Center. We're very proud to produce this program at Stanford University, um, which is open to the public, but also available to Stanford students for credit. Like to remind any Stanford student who hasn't signed up for the course that you must register in order to get the credit. And please be sure to get a copy of the syllabus, either out of Canvas or from our center's website, asia.stanford.edu. I would also like to say a deep thank you to all of our member companies for the financial support of our center, which uh, really allows us to put on programs like this and uh, we hope that everyone here will enjoy the afternoon as well as have a very enlightening and informative time. I'm uh, one other point. If you have questions during the uh, main part of the program today, please put them in chat and I will kind of integrate them and organize them and relay them to our speakers. Today, I'm delighted that we have two speakers to talk to us about open source software strategy in the automotive industry. Because as we were talking earlier, um, as we were all getting ready for the program, certainly openness in software is not a distinctive feature of the automobile industry so far. So this could be a major change in how things are done. To talk about this topic, um, we have two uh, persons from the company Tier 4, which is a very uh, large Japanese startup company. They've received more than $309 million US in funding so far. So they're very close to being a unicorn. Earlier, we were talking that that's not the point of the company, though. The point is really to have a good funding strategy to change the world. So with us is Mr. Akimichi Dagawa, who is co-founder and CEO of Tier 4. Um, prior to founding Tier 4, about 2004, 2000, I'm sorry, 2014, 2015, um, he was the Japan general manager of Intel Capital which is the corporate, the investment arm of Intel Corporation. From 2001 until 2015, uh, at Intel Capital, he did equity investments in more than 20 companies in semiconductor and mobility sectors, including the foundation of broadband wireless carrier UQ Communications. And uh, before Intel, I'm very happy to say that he was an investment manager with KDI and also um, doing analysis of venture financing consulting uh, for one of our member companies, the Mitsubishi Research Institute. So Mr. Degawa will be our first speaker, and then he will introduce our second speaker in a little bit more detail. Our second speaker is Mr. Daisuke Tanaka, who is the chief operating officer of Tier 4 and also the executive officer of the AutoWare Foundation, which is a nonprofit dedicated kind of building open source software in the automotive industry. Daisuke was a business solutions advisor at IBM Japan from 2003 until 2010. He built and managed global supply chain systems for leading global automotive companies. From 2012 until 2018, he was an associate partner at McKinsey and Company, um, their Tokyo office, where he worked with global, global clients in the energy and manufacturing industry. He received his MBA at uh, the Tepper School of Business of Carnegie Mellon University, and he also has a law degree from the University of Tokyo. So I'd like to turn the uh, floor over to Mr. Dagawa to kind of get us started by telling us more about tier four, and then we'll talk more about the open source software itself. Dagawa-san, the floor is yours. 
Okay, thank you very much for uh, a great introduction. And uh, thank you very much for giving us a great opportunity uh, in front of uh, lots of renowned Stanford students, alumni, and uh, sponsoring companies. I'm very excited to be here. Today, we have uh, two parts. So uh, my session is uh, uh, just uh, introductory. So I wanted to uh, get you get a sense of what Tiafo is all, all about. So it's about 10 to 15 minutes. And after that, switch over to Daisuke Tanaka. He is a CEO. He knows everything, uh, good things and challenges. So he will give you the real life example of the business. Okay. Uh, next slide. So this is a brief introduction. Already uh, Professor Dasher explained me uh, perfectly. So I don't have nothing. To, I don't have anything to add. But uh, uh, briefly, I'm a, a TFO representative director and the TFO is founded in December 2015. Before that, I was the Intel capital of uh, head of Japan. Uh, from 2001 to 2015. So I did many things, including the equity investment, uh, post integration, uh, post merger integration, also the help in M1 day. So among other things, well, one of the biggest uh, deals during Intel Capital is a foundation UQ communication. Uh, it is a broadband wireless carrier with, as of today, over uh, 30 million users. So uh, this was one of the most heavy lifting deal in my life. And prior to Intel, uh, uh, I was at KDDI uh, and uh, Mitsubishi Research Institute. So during KDDI, I was also uh, in charge of equity investment and the M&A uh, for a certain period of time. And uh, KDD at the time merged with uh, another telecom company with, called DDI. I was also engaged in, in the mergers. And at MRI, I was a consulting uh, on uh, corporate venture capital uh, for one year. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, through my career, over 25 years, I was. Uh, uh, part of uh, corporate venture capital communities. I am probably one of the longest carrier in Japan in venture investment. But after that, I think a while, uh, what should I do next? So I, has, I have been in, I had been the uh, investor side for 25 years. Then I want to do something completely different. So I switched to entrepreneur side. This is where I, met the other founders of TFO. This is a brief history of me. And this is a warm up. Uh, who is TFO? It's quite strange name. In the auto industry, a top of the food chain is called OEM, like a Toyota, Nissan, GM. Uh, tier one is a supplier. Tier two is a supplier. What is TFO? TFO is the bottom of the food chain. So uh, this means that we want to be is a very bottom foundation of the auto industry in the ecosystem. So uh, also we want to be the neutral to every single auto company in the world. That's a vision. And uh, uh, four stands for intelligent vehicle. Hmm. So the company's mission, I think, uh, Daisuke Tanaka-san may explain in, in more detail, so intelligent vehicle for everyone. With the power of open source, we want to make a complicated, difficult automatic development, automatic driving te uh, technology development available for anyone. So there, this is a kind of uh, uh, mission statement for these companies. I simply put, Tiafo is a 100% uh, software company. We are not developing hardware. We are not OEMs. Uh, we are pure software companies. This is one important message. And another important takeaway from here, here is that we are developing uh, open source software. 
And thirdly, uh, TFO is a founding member of OTA Foundation. Uh, this is another important message. There are a lot of open source out there, but many open source are managed by uh, 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 specific companies. Uh, but OTA Foundation is different. OTA is different, like Linux. So it is managed by uh, NPO. It is not managed by TFO. That's an important transformation that uh, CEO Daisuke Tanaka-san uh, took the lead. This is a, probably the interesting part of uh, open source strategy. And then the next slide. So this slide explains why I participate in the foundation TFO. There are a lot of venture uh, opportunities out there, but why I chose uh, to participate in setting up TFO. Uh, after an Intel uh, capital career. Uh, two reasons. One is market is huge. So automatic driving is not out of today. It's not there out of today, but automatic driving is not a matter of if, but it is a matter of when. This is one reason why I decided to join. And so it is uh, industry transformation uh, in the auto industry. Transition to EV is definitely a paradigm shift. And vehicles are transforming to from hardware to software defined system. This gives us great opportunities. Software's in role is much more important than ever. So uh, TFO as a software company can play a lot of role in this uh, big paradigm shift. These are the most important reasons. Second reason why I decided to join is because our business model is open source. So open source has been the basis of innovation and, and it has been proven in IT industries. Uh, take example, Android, uh, Linux, Hadoop, Kubernetes. This is a little bit new open source. These are the, uh, are the great example of how open source can change the world. And, but interestingly, auto industry has been the very vertical uh, segment. But I believe, as I mentioned, uh, vehicles are uh, transforming to software defined. So uh, auto will be the next OSS for the auto industry. That was my thesis uh, five years ago. Uh, these, these are the reasons why I participated in the foundation tier two. Then uh, next question is, you may ask why OS, OSS, uh, open source software is important to auto industries. And here my thought, uh, benefits to tier four and the benefits to customers. First, uh, I will touch upon the benefits to tier four. When we look at the industries, there are so many players. Waymo is, is developing autonomous driving technology for decades. GM in the United States, Daimler in Germany, and Toyota in Japan. They are spending a lot. And they have a significant number of engineers. If Tiafo as a startup start from scratch and try to build their own proprietary technology, Therefore, we will never be able to win. But if we take an open source strategy, instead of develop everything by ourselves, we will collaborate with uh, other partners. Maybe we can build a, a competitive uh, technologies. That's my biggest uh, motivation uh, for TFO to adopt open source strategies. As written here, develop collectively with the global partners rather than develop uh, by ourselves. And open source is for free and open source can be developed with uh, uh, global partners. So it could be the faster to develop and likely to be the lower cost than proprietary. And most interesting part, which many of us may not be aware of, is that if we take an open source strategy, we can be a friend of almost everyone. 
give you an example. If therefore develop our own proprietary technologies, we have to compete everyone and anyone else. <laughs> we have to compete against Waymo. We have to compete against GM. We have to compete against Toyota. I don't think it is the right thing for us to do. So by open up our software to everyone, we can be collaborate with OEM, we can collaborate with tier one, we can collaborate with any, anyone. That's the uh, most important uh, power of open source. And benefits to customers, you know that, first of all, as it is open source, customers can customize and are adaptive to the customer's need. So you don't need to follow the, the proprietary software uh, uh, mandate. And another important thing is that as it is open source, there is a little concern over vendor queen. You have a freedom to uh, customize. You have a freedom to adapt to your uh, use case. And third point, I recently be aware is that uh, technology is scalable to many applications. So open source author is position neutral. Uh, this open source author can be applicable to Mars application, uh, passengers, uh, shuttles, but also it can be applied to uh, goods delivery. So application is very wide. So technology itself is scalable. And lastly, for customer's standpoint, a customer can uh, uh, save time and cost. So because uh, they can take advantage of the uh, develop, uh, development of open source through open source committee, you don't need to build everything from scratch. That's the open source very proposition that I think of. But, uh, when I start a business, I already get over hundreds of questions, the same question. Hi, Degawa-san, uh, open source is great, but how can you make money from open source? <laughs> Not a hundred. I may get a thousand of questions, the same question again and again and again. <laughs> and here's my thesis. So first of all, uh, TIAFO is developing a reference design. Order is for free, but it's very difficult to use for commercial adoption. So to meet that requirement, so TFO is developing a turnkey order-based AD system. This is called reference design, and the reference design allowing customers to jumpstart uh, automatic driving development uh, in a day one. So we can uh, offer auto itself for free, but we can uh, charge uh, our reference design and so that customer can uh, maximize the value of open source. Great the guy son, just yes. real briefly, AD is autonomous driving, right? Ah, uh, yes, thank you very much for confirmation. AD, so my name yeah, is Akim Chikawa, it is not Akim Chikawa, it is autonomous driving. <laughs> So AD is autonomous driving, uh, and uh, thank you for confirmation. Hmm. It's not my name. And the TF4 <laughs> offers a suite of development tools in support of, in support of order. So uh, FM stands for uh, fleet management system. This is a, a necessary feature uh, for uh, order. And OTA stands for uh, over the air uh, upgrades. It's like a uh, smartphone. If you buy a smartphone every two months or three months, you get a message. You need to uh, upgrade your uh, uh, software version. Uh, or sometimes you, uh, the message says that you need to uh, fill the back, software back, fix the few, uh, software bugs. So that uh, upgrades and uh, uh, fixing bugs can be done through the internet. So it is called OTA. 
And the CI and CI slash CD, this is a continuous integration and continuous development. And DevOps um, yeah, is a, a method to improve the, and enhance the software. It is a development uh, infrastructure. Uh, SIMS stands for simulators. And uh, automatic driving needs a, sp uh, a special HD maps. So we are also offering uh, tools to create a map for automatic driving. So these are very convenient tools to develop uh, automatic driving systems. Uh, again, auto, auto is for free, but we can uh, offer a turnkey, a very convenient a suite of driven tools for the customers. That is one area how we can make money from open source. The second way to monetize open source is upgrade and enhancement and maintenance. I already explained in a little bit about that. So as of today, uh, car industry have a different model. A car OEMs sell the car and uh, uh, after selling the car, a car OEM don't know how end users are using those cars. But when it comes to EV, when it comes to autonomous driving, the business model will be completely changed. So vehicles will be always connected and always managed. So this will give us a, a great opportunity for us to manage, uh, monetize, uh, sorry. Great opportunity for us to monetize. So uh, every time uh, uh, when we enhance the software, we can send a message and allow the customer to upgrade the uh, system. Then a customer can uh, have a luxury to enjoy always the latest version and the latest enhancement. So that the customer can enjoy the best experience uh, through uh, the internet. So this is uh, very interesting. This means that it is the subscription business model. So we can continue to support, we can continue to follow customers uh, after the initial adoption. So we can get the after service opportunities. And this is uh, how careful plans to monetize and going forward. And this is the uh, end of the first session. Uh, this is a very a brief introductory uh, session, but in more detail, Daisuke uh, tanaka is everything. So uh, before that, I'm going to briefly explain uh, Tanaka-san's background. So uh, he's one of the her first employees joining uh, TFO, and he's, uh, as of today, a, a top two uh, chief operating officer uh, at TFO. He is doing uh, literally everything, uh, strategic planning, uh, operation, execution, and also uh, he is also the chief janitor officer. He, he, he needs to do everything, <laughs> uh, house maintenance, maintenance as well. And um, but important thing is that uh, he's the person who decided to make author a uh, pure open source, and he's a founder of uh, uh, NPO called Otea Foundation. So he would build uh, Otea Foundation from scratch. So he will, uh, I hope, can give you a lot of hint and insight how challenging and how wonderful the open source is. So I'm going to switch to uh, Daisuke-san from now. Egoa-san, thank you very much for a kind introduction. Someone called me, I'm a firefighter, but I'm brave enough to jump into a burning project to set it down. <laughs> but anyway, um, as Egoa-san said, uh, I'll take care of all the projects we have in tier four and also the Auto Foundation. So for the rest of the 20, 30 minutes, I'm going to beef up uh, a little bit on what Degawa-san uh, explained, as, not as intro, but as a summary of what we are doing uh, here at the Auto, Auto Community. 
Okay, so uh, this is my uh, bio. Um, uh, that I can say already explained uh, uh, to, uh, to the audience, but right now I'm CEO of TFO. Uh, prior to joining TFO, I was a strategic uh, business consultant at McKinsey & Company. And at that time, for some reason, I was in energy industry and uh, uh, helped client transform a conventional uh, 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 silo type of organization. But, I, but before that, I was an engineer at the IBM and I served Toyota for the global supply chain or Kanban system. So I basically, um, even now, the global uh, e-Kanban, uh, electronic Kanban system uh, is uh, 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 designed by me. So now it's still uh, alive. So uh, from here, um, I will give you I hope you a uh, snapshot of what TFO has been doing in the past few years, as well as what we are doing right now at the Auto Foundation, uh, including uh, the lessons learned that we got uh, from a day-to-day -day, uh, global collaboration uh, on, on, on the Auto Foundation. So first, we are, uh, as Degosan uh, mentioned, we pursued the open source strategy uh, based on the idea that uh, intelligent vehicles should be delivered to everyone, regardless of the regions, regardless of the industry, or regardless of the company you belong to. The open source will solve that because open source is first, uh, it's free, and second, it's down downloadable for everyone. So given this notion, we spent, oh, sorry, we spent uh, quite a bit of time in the past five years uh, do a marketing over a notion of this open source and also uh, do uh, education to the people here in Japan as well as overseas, how AD could solve the problem, the social problem, like aging society, for example, in Japan. So far, we have conducted more than 80 POCs, uh, operational tests, uh, across Japan. Um, sometime we did a POC in urban area like Shinjuku in Tokyo. At that time, we uh, went to a uh, snowy Akita region and did a uh, last mile mobility in this in the severe uh, winter condition. We also did a uh, 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 transportation uh, uh, POC. Uh, in the countryside where shuttle bus or taxi service is almost dead. So by doing this kind of a wide variety of POCs, we try to identify the social issue that we have to uh, address and also um, come up with idea how the ultimate driving uh, uh, vehicles could solve those problems. Uh, uh, no matter whether that a uh, driverless vehicles or whether uh, the safety driver is still on, on board the, the shuttle bus. We also are present in the global environment because we are leader of the waterway community. So we try to expose ourselves in the global environment. And for example, in the United States, the US Department of Transportation, DOT, uh, showed a very strong interest in autoware. And they decided to apply autoware in their highway system called Karma. The reason why they're interested in autoware is because autoware is neutral, it's open source, it's run by non-profit organization. It doesn't belong to a specific automotive company. So, uh, the, so this is a good fit for the government type of initiative. And that's same for China. Uh, we are invited to uh, one of the events led by Qatar. Qatar is a government-led resource center for the automotive uh, technology. Again, uh, the Qatar is interested in auto because it doesn't belong to a specific country. It's not a made in Japan. It's not made in US. It's made by global. That's why China uh, authorities also uh, showed uh, a willingness to leverage auto as uh, their uh, one of their 
uh, basic uh, basic technology. Uh, same for uh, ASEAN, we had a demo in Bangkok and and, and the Europe as well. So this is the beauty of the, uh, the open source, I would say. Then I'll move on to the altware, a little bit deep dive into altware. So what is altware? Um, so maybe I think we should call this one first. What is altware? Altware is a complete full stack AD software stack. It has an uh, end-to-end -end algorithm, a solution, uh, start ranging from perception, uh, control, and planning. So when you do uh, uh, automatic driving, you need at least three key components. One is perception. It's kind of eyes of the human. You want to observe uh, around you guys. Then identify what kind of obstacles are there in front of you or, or, or what kind of pedestrian vehicle is running towards you. So that's perception. The next is planning. Once you identify your, your surroundings, then you need to decide whether you go or no go or stop. So this is more like a brain of the human. And finally, control. Control is like human's arm and, and the foot. So you want to shift, uh, 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 man uh, uh, maneuver the wheels, or you want to uh, uh, control uh, axle or brake. So you need three uh, key components. And Oatware has everything. It has perception algorithm, it has control algorithm, it has uh, uh, planning uh, algorithm. So by downloading software, basically you set, you have everything at hand. And it runs on ROS. ROS is a robot operating system. It's kind of OS for robotics. And it's also free. It's uh, open source. And uh, one of the beauty of the open source is, as Degawasan already explained, it doesn't give you a vendor rocket. So you can use whatever sensors, whatever computers you want because it doesn't belong to a specific uh, industry group. So you can use Berodyne sensor, you can use Sony camera, or you, you can use um, uh, Intel computers, you can use whatever you want with auto. And it doesn't belong to a specific country, a company or country, so you don't need to care about any um, export control issue, whatever. And it's guaranteed as open source because it's developed under the uh, open source license called Apache. So uh, in that cell, Altware is a full stack uh, AD software and it has everything and it's guaranteed as open source and there's no risk for uh, any uh, industry uh, uh, dispute. Then uh, as I said, um, because of this uh, concept, Altware has an extensive ecosystem across the globe. Uh, the Auto Foundation had a strong collaboration with uh, government, computer company, sensor company, mapping company, uh, uh, um, telecodes, insurance company, and so many and so forth. Um, those companies come to Altware because they believe by having collaboration with Altware, they can expand the business. Uh, they can expand their footprint. They can expand business uh, by having additional collaboration here. So in other words, sorry, Altware is a platform and Altware is a foundation. What I mean Altware is platform is uh, Altware uh, can accommodate any kind of uh, 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 the sensors and ECUs. So it can be a platform to gather any kind of technology in in one bucket, in that platform. And Altware as a foundation means Altware can uh, encourage a boost at the next uh, businesses for you because this is a foundation for collaboration. You can find your partners or you can find your customers. Uh, you can develop a new solutions with your, or with your or, or partners uh, coming to this foundation, Altware. So it can be, uh, an enabler for your business, and, and also it can be your business foundation. So, so we have two different uh, concepts here. And the Auto Foundation, as a non-profit organization, are working hard to achieve two goals here. 
And those are the names that already joined the Autech Foundation. There are a bunch of big names here. Uh, from computer company uh, industry, we have ARM, we have Intel, and we have many ECU companies. And we have sensor companies a lot, Paradigm, and we have mapping companies, government, etc. cetera. Uh, actually, the Autoim Foundation didn't do any marketing to recruit those, uh, those uh, players. They came to us because they believe the Autoim Foundation is very attractive and Autoim is promising. But moving forward, the Auto Foundation is thinking of making additional steps to recruit uh, a different type of uh, partners, which are OEMs and tier ones. At this point, we don't have Toyota here. We don't have uh, a BMW here. But we know that they use auto. So moving forward, we want to recruit them to boost our eco uh, ecosystem and more actively um, uh, drive the R and D of the auto. So, so far, maybe it sounds very uh, interesting, exciting, and maybe easy uh, to to operate. But in reality, it's not that easy here. There are um, the ideal situation and the reality that I observed in the past two years. First, people love auto because it's free. And they say they want to actively contribute uh, to the autoware uh, community because we share the common vision. But in reality, it's very challenging to manage the organization because people have a different preferences. For example, customer in Japan has different preference of toward autoware or to, toward the automotive than that in the US. Because here Toyota is popular, but in the US, Ford is popular. So people have a different preference. Same wise. Uh, they have a different preference on the AD solution. So it's very difficult to balance the common vision and individual preference. And the second, um, so we aspire to, to achieve a continuous evolution as the community grows. And so far we have 60 uh, members joining the Auto Foundation. So far so good. But the first 60 early adopter started to say that, okay, what are the benefits of investing or taking a risk of joining the Hotel Foundation from day one? Right? It's true. Well, they're investing a lot to move, to make Autoware to the next level. But so far, Autoware is still not perfect. Autoware still can accommodate only a few ODDs, few scenarios. We can support highways, for example. We can support congested uh, urban area like downtown Tokyo. But they're looking for that solution for, solution for that scenario. Then they're, they're worried about uh, the next group of companies who come to Altware and capture the output that they invested so far. So this is very, again, dif dif difficult to balance of the benefit that we can give to the early adopters and OEMs that will come in very soon. And the last one is a global versus local issue. So we want, we want to uh, have only one autoware. We don't have multiple autoware for each region. So global R&D is our mindset. But if you want to implement automotive locally, that you have to deal with different type of regulations, different type of vehicle types. Then the question is, how we split the roads of global versus local? And what auto foundations should care about? We should care about only global common features or we should care about local requisites as well. There's no solution here. There's no answer here. And the board of directors of auto foundation always discuss these kind of matters to make a community a better place. So, so this is sort of the secret of the, the, the organization management. But that's it, we are enjoying a lot. So we have lots of events across the globe. We have presentation, we have hackathon, we have meetups, we have demos and parties. 
in everywhere in the world now, uh, COVID-19 uh, hinders us from doing this kind of event, fun event, but from 2021 or 2022, we will restart this fun event uh, to entertain our members, also do a marketing of Altware. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, Altware. Then a little bit uh, deeper into the strategy of the implementation. So this is a key slide of my presentation today. This slide shows the relationship between the global r and and the local implementation. So on your uh, left off, uh, there's an orange uh, circle. So this is auto foundation. So at auto foundation, we develop a common features we call the core. So it's algorithm, set of algorithms, including perception, control, and planning. But it doesn't include local requirements. And the local requirement should be handled by the local integrator. For example, in Japan, here for is a local integrator. So we download the auto core from the auto foundation and we add additional features as auto universe uh, on top of the auto core. The auto universe uh, features include uh, compliance with the Japanese uh, traffic regulations or compliance uh, or, or, or uh, uh, adaptation uh, to a Japanese uh, customer's preference in terms of uh, the, uh, the past uh, planning, how you want to drive the route. So we add algorithm locally, then we define the different design. I'll explain this later. We define different design, then we also handle the operational data locally. This is also a critical point because oftentimes uh, the AD operational data is very, very sensitive. That includes uh, the road conditions, that include uh, uh, very uh, confidential mapping uh, data. So the data cannot be shared across uh, uh, the globe. So it has to be handled locally uh, uh, due to the local regulations. So data is also here and locally. The vehicle itself is also uh, the local one uh, because for example, uh, we want to have a uh, right wheel or left wheel, or we want to have Toyota versus GM. So there's a wide variety of uh, different requirements here. So we want to develop a local auto ecosystem. Then we need local partners, local integrators to bundle everything into one vehicle, right? So uh, even though everything, uh, the common features come from the auto air core, but there are a lot to, lot to do but locally. And TF4 is now doing this uh, uh, in, in Japan, but to become a global number one player uh, in the world, we need local partners in every region. And that's why we are working hard with Auto Foundation to expand our ecosystem. Uh, lucky so far, we have identified at least three to four key partners in each region, US, Europe, China, Taiwan, uh, and some other regions. And we are now uh, working hard to develop those local partners by giving them a uh, know-how that we accumulated so far in Japan uh, to uh, support auto implementation in each region. We sometimes export our know-how to a, uh, a partner in China or in the US. We sometimes fly over to the US to actually do the work on site uh, uh, for the local partners as a phase one. Then we uh, give it, uh, give the work to the local partner. That's uh, step two, step three. So we we do that, and once we successfully implement the vehicles on the ground in each region, we ask all the partners to provide feedback to Autoware Core to upgrade Auto Core, Autoware Core to the next level. So if uh, uh, one local partner develop a highway features in US, then we ask them to give it back to uh, Autoware Core. Then we make uh, discussions at Auto Foundation whether that feature is uh, useful for everyone. And if everyone agree to include those features in core, then Auto Foundation decide to merge those features into Auto Core. Then we start redistribution of that new feature to each region. So that's a kind of circle that uh, we have developed so far. Even at this point, 
tier four is the biggest contributor of the oatware. But hopefully next year, next next year, we see at least three to five uh, big contributor in each region who can together uh, manage this uh, uh, distribution feedback so forth. So this is a sort of, sort of a key success factor for the auto community and also tier four as well. All right, then uh, uh, different design. Oh, that's a point a little bit here. So different design is a set of software and hardware uh, optimized for different scenarios. Here, I show three different scenarios. ODD one is a dedicated environment. It's a closed area, like a factory, for example. There's no pedestrians walking, no vehicles uh, running. So it's a dedicated road uh, for uh, AD. So this is one uh, ODD, one uh, scenario. Then we have a uh, different design for here. For example, very simple uh, sensor configuration, very simple algorithm, and very simple operational requirement. ODD2, a little bit more complicated uh, 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 area, for example, university campus or, or, or large park, the central park. Here, we, you have pedestrian, but and you have bicycle, but maybe you don't have vehicles. Here, there should be a different set of sensors and computers and algorithms than ODD1. So it's a bit more uh, complicated upgrade version. And you have more comp complicated version, urban area maybe in uh, downtown Manhattan or, or, or central Tokyo. You want to have maybe 10 cameras, 10 sensors, and uh, super powerful computers on board to handle all kinds of unexpected scenarios. So you have, again, different uh, design required here. And, and uh, easy to say, but actually this is very difficult to design because you want to um, uh, go through all the evaluation testing to, to validate that your sensor suite or your computer is good enough to accommodate those unexpected scenarios. And that work uh, is now, uh, uh, so TFO has uh, uh, the capability to handle all the evaluation of those different designs. And that's why we believe that tier four has strong capability in providing different design. Right? We know uh, how the sensor works. We know how the computer works. We know what kind of map is required. We know how to do a testing. Uh, we, we know how to do a POC. So we know everything. That's why we can design different design. And that's why we want to expose those different design ideas to other regions so that uh, uh, the, our partners can short, shorten the lead time for implementation. So this is the one that I said different designs is required for locally. And that's why TFO is happy to export the different design idea to other region uh, to implement what we are in locally. So this is the core value that we believe TFO should embrace. Then I finally, I move on to a little bit case study uh, uh, explanation. So right now we have four different reference design, as I said earlier. Number one is ODD1, and the flagship model is Golf Cart. So together with Yamaha, uh, we developed this unmanned delivery golf cart, uh, applicable for automotive uh, factory or a large warehouse, or even shopping center backyard. So uh, uh, this golf cart is now running uh, as a service in Yamaha's factory, and the, uh, we aspire to expand this business to um, other industry like uh, manufacturing or warehouse. So it's, it's already there. Um, we have spent five years developing those vehicles and software now, but it's ready to go. It's, it's running around the clock. So if you need three people to do operation around the clock, then this vehicle can handle only by one vehicle. So it costs you here. Another example is e pallet uh, the Olympic shuttle bus. So uh, we have 
uh, we worked with Toyota uh, from 2017, and we developed this uh, last mile mobility called e pallet This is EV uh, uh, made by Toyota, and we implemented this uh, 20 e pallet at the Tokyo 2020 uh, Olympic Village back in August this year. And all the athletes, coaches, and VAPs uh, took a ride in the village uh, to go to a shipping center in, in the village or, or uh, to the gym uh, for uh, daily exercise. So here's a video. It's not an athletic period because it's, we, can't took, we couldn't took video inside the village. So this is a, a different location, but it's exactly what they implemented in the village. Maximum speed is 20 kilometers per hour. And it can accommodate maximum 20 people or four wheelchairs inside the car. Some operation is still handled by uh, the safety operator on the boat. For example, uh, the open door, closed door, or supporting wheelchair passengers. But all uh, the other drivings, uh, stopping, stop and go, uh, uh, are handled by footwear. And and oh, this I'll pass this. And another example is a robot taxi. Maybe in the US, uh, there's a lot of robot taxis run by Zooks, Waymo, and we are also uh, developing our robot taxi. So here uh, we tested this uh, in uh, one of the uh, countryside in Japan. So no driver on board, and we demonstrated a uh, two kilometers drive from uh, the station uh, to a community plaza uh, with multiple vehicles. In Japan, only TF4 can do this uh, driverless uh, vehicle operations uh, thanks to our track record uh, authorized by the government. Well, it's going to take another five years to implement those robot taxi in Japan because we also need to um, implement a lot of additional features to make the robot taxi 100% safe and convenient. Uh, but so uh, we believe that those uh, slow speed mobility will come first, maybe 2023, 2024, then 2025 onward, robot taxi uh, will come. That's our uh, timeline. Right. And finally, um, AMO, or delivery robots. Again, uh, there are a lot of uh, similar solutions in the US, like Stasi, for example. And these are popular due to COVID-19 uh, situation. So people don't want to interact with people, uh, humans. So those uh, robots will basically deliver goods, food, medicine uh, to your uh, house. The government. In Japanese government has a very strong push to implement those uh, robots. And we are selected as one of the key uh, developers for those solutions. So government has strong support to us. And we did this kind of uh, POCs uh, many times already, and together with local people here. So this is a, a delivery of the cleaning uh, 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 staff. Again, oh, I showed four different solutions, golf cart, e pallet taxi, and the robot, but we use only one software, which is Autoware. So Autoware can accommodate everything. And because it's not better looking, it's, it's flexible, uh, it can accommodate any kind of ODDs. And finally, um, I will touch upon a little bit about uh, our business. So again, open source is free, but you need additional support to implement. When you implement AD, you have to have these five steps, design, development, implementation, adaptation, operation, and maintenance. And for each steps, you need additional support. For example, you need to, um, you want to define uh, local requirements, you need to define ODD, you want to select the vehicles, you want to install software on vehicles, 
you want to make a fine tuning with the vehicle to make a vehicle more convenient and safe, then you want to do operations on the ground, and maintenance and so on and so forth, then those work uh, uh, are quite require uh, a high uh, uh, technical capabilities because it's not that easy for you to, to really do uh, the work on the ground. So TFO is happy to help and we provide technical support to our client, to the mobility as a service client or to OEM uh, with those services. And that's a revenue source for now. Still our early stage and we only have a few clients so far, but uh, we aggressively uh, cultivate the market uh, uh, with our own capability. And at the same time, our, one of the issues that we face is the scalability. We do basically do this kind of work manually at this point, but right now uh, we are implementing two set to do all the work automatically, at least semi-automatically so that uh, we can support as many customers as possible in the near short term. Yep, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, shall we open the yeah, q and Dasha san Yeah, thank you very much, Dagawa-san. We've got lots of questions. I want to go back to one of the very first. Is uh, AutoWare really going to only focus on driving operation? Or is it going to have to do with other aspects of the vehicle, such as the air conditioner control or other things that happen in the vehicle? This is from Richard Chung. Thank you, Richard. Um, the seat control, illumination, well, um, entertainment, are you going to make that part of the core or is that going to be always something else? Well, uh, at this point, we do not support uh, in-car uh applications but we uh, focus on uh, the driving itself but obviously uh we, we know that there is a requirement and need to support those like cockpit or infotainment uh, type of solutions and the other foundation happy to expand that uh, activities uh activity to that front and uh, maybe that's a future hallmark for the okay and kind of a related question is how would um, the AutoWare interact or relate or be compatible with other things like iOS or um, Android, some of the other kinds of operating systems that they have? Couldn't those be extended instead of having a totally separate one like AutoWare? Well, uh, technically speaking, it can be extensive. We can extend hardware to to uh, support those new OS. But in reality, the most of the uh, cost that invest uh, to hardware is evaluation, testing. I mean, validation, verification. It costs a lot. It takes long time to validate all the features uh, on one OS. So. Uh, uh, migration from one OS to, to, to the second OS is possible, but it well, requires a lot of investment in time and cost uh, to ensure the safety and also uh, get approval from the government. So, so uh, well, yeah, okay. it might be sure. challenging, frankly. Yeah, and, and each company has to decide what they're going to support, right? It's not only what you deliver, but like you say, the ongoing support and maintenance of the platform also takes quite a bit of effort. Uh, I want to uh, ask, really, we had a number of questions about how you interact with big OEMs. And I can imagine that, you know, this is a pretty conservative group. First of all, in regard to open source, as opposed to um, proprietary platforms, um, what are their biggest objections? Is it security? Is it uh, hacking? What what kind of what kind of objections do they make, and how do you overcome those? Well, there's no strong objection, in my view. 
we know that uh, most of the major OEMs actually use Altware in different ways. For example, Toyota, they implement Altware on the actual vehicle. But for Nissan, for example, they use Altware as a benchmarking tool against their proprietary software. And same for Ford, same for Renault, uh, same for uh, 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 Stellantis and other uh, um, OEMs. So I, I've never heard a strong objection uh, against Altware, but that's just, it's true that there's a concern around data security and also uh, patent violation, potential patent violation, intellectual property, and also certification. Certification is one of the issues that OEMs really uh, worry about. When they want to implement uh, AD software on their vehicle, they want to have a certified uh, OS, ISO uh, 26216, which is functional safety, for example, and data security also has ISO uh, standard. But auto itself doesn't have certification so far. And that would OEMs be the very stick to, of yeah, exactly. And the yeah. OEM tend to stick to this certification as a symbol of safety, right? But in reality, yeah. it's not true, but safety can be managed by different ways, right? Not about safety uh, certification itself. It can be managed by uh, the number of tests you uh, go through or how you operate on the ground. It can be achievable in, in, in different ways. So certification doesn't mean anything for for me, but but reality, certification, it's, it's one of the top priority for you. So in other areas of software, the key to having a really good open source um, platform is an active developer community that all convince their friends as well as want to use it for their own development. Since the systems are so much under the control of the big OEMs, how do you build up a, a big developer community? Um. First, we reach out to students, universities, academia, where they're looking for a place to contribute, right? And actually, the academia is the biggest contributor so far at the Hotel Foundation. And when you and say contribute, number, you mean lines of code or whatever? Algorithm. Right, lines of code, a number of testing. Yeah. They, yeah. they help us a lot. And emerging EVs, uh, EV companies in China, for example, they don't have a capability or resource to develop uh, AD from scratch. So they need to rely on something else. Then all the way there and it's at hand. So a lot of uh, emerging EV companies are coming in to the auto community and they're also uh, forming a big group of uh, contributors. So traditional OEMs, well, they have their own work and, and I know it's fine, but there are and unexpectedly a big a group of people who are looking for uh, uh, the solution that also the place to contribute. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, this is interesting. So, uh, go ahead. yeah, in the auto mass driving sector, this is pretty new. So globally, the scarce source, uh, resource is very scarce. So even the big name mm, doesn't have a, uh, adequate engineer to solve the complicated uh, AD system. So we are frequently talking with uh, big OEMs, uh, tier ones. So uh, they also need help from uh, third parties. So uh, Altair could be one of them. So if we have an uh, abundant engine resource globally, a big OEM can develop everything by themselves. But unfortunately, this is a very emerging, very complicated, a very uh, difficult area to uh, build a complete AD system. So there are a lot of opportunity for us to work together. That's Actually, Dagawa-san, you hit one of my questions, and that is to what extent are legacy systems by the mm -hmm. big OEMs already a barrier to move forward with this more efficient solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And one interesting trend is that uh, for conventional vehicles, uh, engine, uh, chassis, th those are very important. Uh, Powertrain is also important. But when it comes to autonomous driving, uh, computing system is getting more importance. So how to tie up with uh, 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 issue vendors? Issue means uh, uh, in vehicle uh, in computing system is getting more importance. So in that sense, uh, we are closely working with uh, global uh, uh, CPU vendors like uh, Intel, NVIDIA, uh, ARM, uh, uh, NXP, Zarynx. So uh, that would be the uh, kind of uh, business model uh, change over the years. So okay. uh, in those areas, uh, in my observation, uh, OEMs are heavily invested in those areas, but this is a relatively new uh, area. So even the OEM doesn't have a, uh, adequate uh, engineering resource uh, to build an affordable, a complete system. So uh, I hope TFO can be of their help. So uh, we actually, I had a, a couple of comments came in about how these, you know, other domains besides just regular automobiles, the delivery robots, the shuttle vehicle, um, those are areas where really there's more room to run. The, the big OEMs may not be quite as wedded to their own solutions yet. Um, someone asked, could the system be used for drones? Has, uh, is, there, is there going to be something about flying vehicles, autonomous mm -hmm. vehicles in the autoware plat pallet or platform or whatever? Probably um, that's for you, Tanaka-san. Yeah, Tanaka-san will uh, soon fly in. <laughs> Uh, could, could, could you say it again? So I miss it. Last sure. Um, so is the um, is the autoware core expandable to drones or already usable by drones for flying? <laughs> well, uh, in fact, we got inquiry from both Marine, the, the BISO, and the drone. And Reality, it's difficult because um, the reason why it's difficult is uh, the algorithm that we, we use for perception is uh, scan matching. So we match the mapping data and what you see right now through sensors and you match both data and identify you where you are, right? If you fly in the air, if you go to the ocean, there's no structure around you. So it's very difficult to really identify where you are. But we don't use any GPS uh, for navigation system, right? But but maybe um it can be extensible. So if there's a huge requirement, then uh, why not? <laughs> but at this point, yeah, not, interesting. So not, if a developer understand. wants to use AutoWare, it's complete. The the um it's completely free. Uh, have you considered um expanding it so that it would involve a licensing fee? Probably to the foundation. That's well, a good um, question. Mm, That's a good question. Ahead. Yeah, even Tadaka san and I had a debate in internally. So, uh, as of today, uh, make auto air available, uh, uh, make uh, auto air proliferate is a first priority. So, we don't have uh, a concrete plan to build uh, a charge. Uh, proprietary order upon uh, uh, OSS order. But sometime in future, we may, but not at this point of time. So make uh, OS, OSS universal is a first priority. So in other words, niche OSS uh, will be dead. Uh, niche OSS will never win. So uh, order is in a good position, but uh, we need to make other phenomena available everywhere. Uh, this could be the first step, we are, in my opinion. But as I mentioned, uh, okay. I had an internal debate, so Tanaka-san may have a different idea. 
well, if we become a unicorn and we have lots of money, then <laughs> we can make it close and develop in house. <laughs> At this point, we are still small versus uh, Google Waymo. So we need supporters and, and uh, to encourage them to support us. It has to be open sourced, no license, no fees. Okay. Now, more kind of to the tier four side, this kind of, re kind of reminds me to what happened with the Linux community a long time ago, really 20 years ago, where uh, if you have an open developer community like the Linux community was back then, the real value added comes from the people who are true masters at using that software and implementing it and also delivering the projects on time. So uh, I'm curious if uh, in the autonomous driving world for uh, software development, the software development world for autonomous driving, if you're seeing those kinds of truly gifted people in this tier four, um, is that one of your competitive strengths? Yeah, exactly. So um, we want to be a red hat. Yeah. Uh, and the Linux Foundation. So we uh, regard ourselves as a doctor who can solve all the pain points for client hat. Uh, OEM may have uh, a quite good set of capabilities, but they don't have any, um, for example, a fine tuning capability uh, of the hardware. In that case, we just do the work for them on that front uh, to complement they're missing pieces. So we're quite flexible. We don't have any packaged uh, solution. We can be flexible to solve any kind of issues that the client face. And to, to do so, uh, we have made uh, maximum effort to hire good talent across the value chain, starting from uh, requirement definition uh, to algorithm building, uh, to testing, to uh, support. Mm. So that's uh, our core cap uh, competence of tier four, I believe. Because maybe you could add here. Yeah, uh, uh, you covered almost everything. <laughs> so with regard, especially to the testing and support, you can't do that unless it's actually in use. And um, if you don't have the AutoWare core, certified for the safety and, and certified as to the ISO standard, um, it would seem like you're in a catch-22 position where you, you have to have an implementation in order to really test what your, system, what your software can do. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So that's. Um, so far, that's not an issue. That's yeah. That's We're not able an issue. to get enough uh, get enough demand for implementations to really have the core well vetted. Yeah, but but one thing we have to really keep in mind that we have to gradually step up uh, to expand the ODDs. So right now, all to our core support only very similar uh, simple ODDs uh, like um, golf cart, for example, and slow speed mobility, robot taxi is still uh, far away. So uh, the critical thing is the old quest should grow uh, 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 step by step to meet uh, all kind of requirements that a client, potential client may have in 2030. Right? Maybe in 2030, there should be no difference between Waymo algorithm and auto algorithm because algorithm is not uh -huh. a place to compete, right? The place to compete yep. is its operations, implementations, and the mobility as a birth service. So uh, before 23, uh, what Auto Foundation has to do is really uh, implement all the requirements on the ground as algorithm. Right? That, that's why we have to do. Yeah. OK, thank you. So I have a question from someone who is an independent developer. So what hardware essentials are necessary to be part of the community? And I'd like to add, make that a bigger question. Um, 
how does somebody get involved? If you're interested in developing this kind of software, do you have to demonstrate a certain kind of expertise or how do you become a member of the foundation if you're an individual as opposed to a company? As individual, um, so anyway, or maybe well, that uh, doesn't happen. Well, well, that, well, I, I, well, just just go to um, our development platform, like GitHub, GitLab, Discourse, or Slack channel. We have uh, different uh, a number of uh, channels uh, uh, for individual developers. So just visit uh -huh. there. Uh, the the easiest way, the first step is go to autoware.org, our website. Yeah, there's the instruction. Autoware.org. Channel. Okay. Yeah. Or just email me. That's also fine. Okay, that sounds fine. So, um, how do you see the kind of international competition in autonomous vehicles developing right now? There <laughs> seems to be this entire ecosystem developing in China, especially around the Baidu platform. That's a good question, difficult question, <laughs> because I know I give it to you. <laughs> international competition. How do you see? How do you see that? And really, com competing approaches—not so much which company is winning, but um, is it really well, going? Is the world going to be able to come together? Well, uh, maybe um, I will give you a three, two, four different views. Uh, number one is anyway, the AD market is big enough. So even if you have a competitor, still you have a big pie left on the table. So just just buy them, right? That, that's my view, right? That's number one. Uh -huh. Number two, the mobility has a different requirements. Um, uh, for example, uh, uh, transportation, passenger transportation versus uh, uh, good goods delivery, slow speed highway, uh, geofence versus urban road. So there are different scenarios, and no one can just um, capture all the requirements. Even Google way more can do only robot taxi. That's it, no trucks, no buses, right? So as long as we focus on specific areas, then I think we are good to, good to win. That's, that's my views uh, and the second view. And last one, anyway, mobility is local. You have to deal with all the complicated local regulations. I don't think Google Weibo can come over to Japan and start operation from day one because they can't comply with all the requirements set by the government. But we know the regulations, Japan, and we can do the robot taxi from day one, right? So, um, so the internet compet internet co international competition is there, but it doesn't mean that the winner can take all right? regionally. So that's also another were interesting aspect of the mobility industry, uh, in my understanding. Okay, uh, I think uh, that's a great answer. Go ahead, Degao, uh, uh, Tanaka, were you going to say something? No, 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 no. Uh, it is a very interesting question. So my, my personal opinion is that a competition is definitely needed and highly welcome. So we're still a nascent stage the market is huge, but uh, I don't know if it is a good analogy, but it is a relationship with Visa and Master and Diners. Uh -huh. So if there is, was no competition, market will never evolve. So take an example, uh, assuming that Waymo will stop developing automatic driving technology tomorrow, that would be the concern. So Waymo could be a great fellow traveler to open up the market. Mm -hmm. So automatic driving requires many things. So uh, accept acceptance by the society is one thing and uh, uh, cost must be reduced and uh, regulation must be changed. Uh, deregulation is needed. All of this uh, effort must be uh, done by fellow travelers. So there may be a competitor, but in my opinion, all of them are 
uh, very necessary uh, philanthropia for us to win. So uh, competition is much, much more fierce competition is uh, appreciated at this point of time. So uh, tier four and auto uh, cannot control everything. We need to be one of the key player. If we can remain the one of the uh, top five, top six uh, key player uh, that people will care about, care, care, that would be a huge success in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question, and that's about things like smart city initiatives, where you're getting large areas are developing infrastructure for testing self-driving cars. And I'm curious to what extent um, there's a common language between the driver operation software that you're working with and the kind of sensor communication and other software that would be really part of the, the embedded infrastructure in the location, the embedded in the road or in traffic lights or whatever. Is that going to be something that is, um, how, how do you hand off? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also probably for tanaka -san. Yeah, it's, uh... We are actually collaborating with uh, the smart pole uh, company, so signal manufacturers. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, those, those companies to to align uh, on the interfaces between hardware and uh, infrastructure. So far, uh, as Dashasen said, it's not fully aligned. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but uh, but the the point is uh, everyone has the same goal here. They want to align the interface, right? And they want to collaborate. So so it's not a, it's not a difficult actually uh, to make it happen. So we have we have a common uh, view on beyond that. And well, talking about uh, the smart city, uh, we believe the greenfield uh, newly developed. Um, the town or area yeah. is a place that we implement AD first. Uh, that's why we implemented e at Olympic Village. Because Olympic Village is a newly built uh, 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 town where the design of the town is optimized for uh, e pilot operations. So uh, we expect that uh, the Japanese government also announced that they are gracefully invest we invest uh, into a smart city development in Japan. And one of the core uh, technology that they're uh, looking for is AD, of course. So, um, so we want to really um, start aligning the interfaces from that greenfield uh, areas first, then um, expand the successes in the greenfield to other regions to fully, fully uh, uh, collaborate between mobility and the city or infrastructure. So you see that path to development. Do you also see from where we are now, somewhere between level two and level three yeah. of yeah. autonomicity, uh, do you see it staying at this level for a long time or do you see it moving <laughs> faster toward level four? Well, for Robotaxi, uh, level three to 2025. So okay. geo-fenced area, like golf cart, or shuttle bus, maybe the four star from 2023 or four. Wow. In, in Japan, maybe the same in, in yeah. other region too. Yeah, but that's, that's impressive. We're going to see a lot in the next few years. <laughs> maybe too aspirational. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I think that what I'd like to do now is to end the formal section of the program, and then we'll stay around for anyone who would like to ask questions directly in a more informal kind of off-the-record format. So um, in just a second, I'm going to ask for the recording to be stopped, but uh, please stay with us for a few more minutes if you can, and uh, like to help ask you first to please join me in thanking 
Mr. Dagawa, Mr. Tanaka for really great presentation, very informative, very interesting to see this side of autonomous vehicles. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you.